Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to another session of our series, Morning Reflections on the 99 Names of Allah. Inshallah, in today's series, we'll be covering the names of As-Salam, Al-Mu'min, and Al-Muhaymin, names that carry the meaning of meanings of peace, of security, of protection, and complete control. So inshallah, to begin uh, with the name of peace, As-Salam. So peace is something that's not just a feeling um, for us. It's not just something uh, temporary or we get a little bit of it and that's gone. Uh, in, in our tradition in Islam, uh, peace is a state of being that we oftentimes are seeking, that we aspire to, but it is something that uh, we might not get much from in this world or uh, from our routines, from our jobs, from the stresses of uh, having to uh, work in this world, have to be in the society, uh, the relationships that we have, all these different things um, create different stressors for us and may uh, make us long for peace, may make us hungry for peace, not just for a short respite, but wanting substantive peace. And uh, inherently, we are probably individuals that are restless in that aspect that we uh, are not in a state of peace and searching for that peace. And what we need to first and foremost recognize is that uh, Allah is a salam, that when we think about peace, peace is something that comes directly from Allah because Allah is a salam. Uh, Allah is the provider of peace. Allah is the creator, the source, and the originator of peace. Uh, and so this doesn't mean that we can't find peace in the world around us. We can, because Allah is the one who created this world. And as such, this world has elements in which peace can be bestowed upon us and that we find peace. But we might, we must remember that regardless of where that peace came from, whether from a good interaction with somebody or from a gift someone gave us or uh, just from some good circumstances, this peace is something that ultimately comes from Allah. And knowing as salam simply means that we recognize that the source of peace is Allah. Um, and this peace is something that doesn't distance us from Allah. It's something that brings us closer to and gives us more awareness of Allah. Um, and uh, as we recognize uh, this name of as salam and as a source of peace, the giver of peace, the root meaning of this name has the connotations to be safe from harm, to have security, to be in a state of safety, but also to be free from defect. What does that mean? Uh, that means that Allah's attributes and actions are those which are not only free from fault or free uh, from any flaw, but they are the actions that bring about and produce peace. As we uh, said in our last session yesterday, that Allah has forbidden for himself oppression or anything that relates to injustice. And as a result, Allah produces uh, actions and creates and does all these things that in, in, a, in an essence, create peace, that peace comes from these just as a natural byproduct, as a natural source, because Allah does not do things like injustice, oppression, or harm to uh, individuals that uh, that are there unjustly in this aspect, that Allah does the things um, that bring about peace. And as a result, Allah's attributes are those which are free from fault, free from defect, but also those which create safety, cause peace um, for those who believe in Allah, and those uh, who, who are uh, in Allah's creation. And so uh, with respect to the ways to, the, to peace, to attaining this peace, we must first and foremost, as we mentioned, remember that Allah is the source of peace. When we do the salah, at the end of the salah, we say a dua that Allahumma anta salam, wa minka salam, tabarakta ya dal jalali wa ikram. We acknowledge that Allah, you are the source of peace and from you is peace. So lifting that up, that when we have just finished worshiping, uh, when we have just finished praying, now we are uh, invoking Allah as uh, anta salam, wa minka salam. That's someone who is uh, the, the uh, that Allah is uh, the one who provides peace, but also is uh, the, the originator of peace, the source of peace, and thinking about what did we just do? How do we connect our prayers? How do we connect our rituals as sources of peace as well, that we sometimes see them as burdensome or just as things that we just do because we're told to do them, but seeing them as these outlets for peace, the way that we can attain peace. And so when we think about this element of peace, knowing that it's not just something limited to this world or uh, just in the relationship we have with Allah, but uh, peace is also a element that we aspire to and we hope for. Uh, in the hereafter, Allah calls uh, Jannah, the 
abode of peace, the Darus Salam, the home of peace where those who um, will be guided, those who uh, will be uh, yearning for it, those who are deserving of it will be given it in an everlasting life. And so a peace that is uh, not bound by any limit, but a home of peace and a, an abode of peace where you can find that. Um, and as uh, individuals that are uh, that are recognizing Allah's as salam. We also, as with any other divine name, are charged with taking on an action to help um, further this name and to act on it. Um, so we spread the peace. Literally in the Muslim community, as Muslims, we, we say uh, almost on a daily basis, salamu alaikum to uh, someone, whether they're Muslim or non-Muslim. But we recognize that when we say salamu alaikum, we're not just saying, hello, hi, how are you doing? Um, that when we say salamu alaikum, we are saying peace be unto you. We are making a supplication that may peace be unto you. We are also recognizing uh, and checking ourselves right at that interaction that I'm saying peace upon this person. Um, that means I cannot bring any harm to this person. I can't come and say salamu alaikum and then slap that person. Um, I have to be an agent of peace, bringing peace. And lastly, when I say salamu alaikum, I say peace be upon you. But we recognize that Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam, that Allah is the one who provides this peace. So in that short reading, when we say the salam, we are unpacking so much that we wouldn't unpack in a traditional hello, hi, uh, or anything like that. So we recognize that as agents of peace, it first starts with just spreading it, just recognizing that within ourselves to spread it. Uh, it's very curious that the Prophet Sallallahu uh, when he first came to Medina and migrated from Mecca, he told uh, the Muslims there, oh people, spread the peace, spread the salam feed other people, uphold the ties of kinship, and pray in the night when people are sleeping, and you will then enter paradise with salam. You will be entering into paradise with peace. So it starts with any community that you build, any initiative that you start, any relationship that you start, you started off with peace. You started off with safety, with security, um, with anything free from defect in this aspect of genuineness. So providing that peace is the first step to being admitted to uh, the, the abode of the hereafter with peace. And so in order to be, as I mentioned, at peace with others, we've got to do that work on ourselves. And we have to be at peace in ourselves because if we're not, uh, the things that we do uh, will not be from a genuine space. So we want to intentionally lift that up. So when we live with as salam, when we incorporate this name, we are often remembering that Allah is not just Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, uh, Al-Malik, al Qudus, all these different beautiful names. Allah is also as salam when we are in those difficult moments, when we are in those moments of trial and tribulation, but also in those moments of peace, we invoke Allah as the one who provides peace to give us peace, to sustain our peace, to bestow us uh, that peace, that safety, that security that we long for. Um, we find that peace in ourselves. And when we find that peace in ourselves, as we mentioned, we become agents who spread the peace. And as agents of peace, we recognize that we operate under the umbrella of as salam. So we can't be agents of as salam and not give salam and give harm or give oppression or give any of these things transgression to people um, in the name of as salam. And that, that doesn't fly. So we have to be individuals that provide uh, salam to those uh, as, as servants of as salam. And this translates beautifully into the next divine name. So we go from peace and safety to this element of security in al-mu'min. Um, al-mu'min has the root words that mean safety as well. Safety, security, and protection, not just physical, but emotional and spiritual. Um, its meaning also has the connotations of affirmation and belief. Uh, it comes from this aspect that Allah gives safety, security, and protection, um, freedom, from fear, uh, safety from worry, from the aspects of belief. When people believe in Allah, they are ultimately protected from these aspects of fear. They are safe from worry. Um, but you might wonder that why are they uh, in this state? Because we know people who are God-fearing. We know people in our tradition who are uh, believers, but they've been afflicted with different things. Um, that you know, when Allah is giving security through faith, freedom from fear, how does this relate to their lived experiences? Because we know that there are people um, who are our pious predecessors who were afraid, um, who had faith, yet they still were afraid. 
Um, and when the Quran says that for those who say Allah is our Lord, no fear nor grief will befall them, that how, how do we reconcile that when we know the Prophet ﷺ himself was someone who uh, experienced grief, experienced fear at times. Um, and this is to lift up that their belief in Allah um, it doesn't negate the fact that emotionally they felt these in certain circumstances, that they did feel grief, they did feel worry, they did feel um, insecure at times, that they did feel these real emotions that you and I feel as well, but that it relates to the hereafter, that the fear that they have is uh, that they are not afraid of what will happen to them. They are not afraid of what is to come. And it beautifully connects with this thing that Al Ghazali said, that one of our biggest fears as human beings is what will happen after we die, is the life after death. Where are we going to go? So when, when Allah lifts up that those who believe in Allah, those who say Allah is our Lord, um, they will not have fear or grief because they know where they're going. They know what will happen to them if their corporeal body is to be lost, if they are to be killed, if they are to be um, removed from this earth and, 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 and hurt by anybody in that manner, that they know where they are going to be uh, ending up and with whom they're going to end up. So the serenity is provided through al-mu'min, the security of mind is provided through al-mu'min, this protection of one's, uh, one's faith is provided through al-mu'min. And when we live with this name, we trust in Allah's promise. We give others security, just as we have been given security, a security of mind. Um, as the Prophet ﷺ said that a Muslim is the one from whose tongue and whose actions and hands people are safe, uh, that uh, a believer is not the per person who um, you know, goes to sleep and their neighbor uh, is, is hungry at night, that they go to sleep full while their neighbor is hungry, that you are responsible for giving others security. You are responsible as a Muslim, as a believer, to provide, be an agent of not just peace, an agent of security and protection, that people seek safety and no safety from you that you are uh, someone who upholds the truth, but you're also a guide to safety. You are an agent of that and a provider of that. And this goes into the last name of Al-Muhaymin, the one who is the protector, the safeguarder, the uh, one who is the guardian, who's in complete control, who is uh, of command and of protection um, of human beings. And so when we think of protection, think of guardianship and think of safeguarding, we sometimes think of guards at you know, city gates, or we think about um, people who are watching at night and giving protection, but we know that oftentimes their protection is limited. They have to, they can only cover so much. They have to do patrols. They have to walk around. They have to switch out duties because they get tired. They don't know what might be happening inside the space that they are protecting. They can only see with their eyes um, and, and with their devices what, what, what's going on. Whereas the, as the protection that Allah offers us, again, not just physical protection, mental, spiritual, emotional, uh, social, all these kinds of protections that are there beyond just the material, the protection that Allah provides is one that is uh, of, in, of all knowing that of this concept of knowledge, not just of what is being protected, but protected from what, that each individual unit within the care of protection is understood, the needs are understood, as Allah is al-alim, then you have Allah is able, Allah is not one who needs uh, other partners to be able to provide uh, this protection or needs any help in providing this, Allah is fully able and capable as Allah is al-qadir, the one who is able and most capable. Uh, and then you have this aspect of continuity that Allah is, Allah was, and Allah always will be. Uh, whereas the other agents of protection in our world have to take a break, have to be rotated out. Allah is always there. Allah is al-baqi, the one who is everlasting. And Allah will always be there for us and for those who believe in Allah. Um, and so al-Muhaymin is the one who safeguards, safeguards in an all-encompassing and complete way. And when we live with this name and mindful of this name, we are aware that we take control and supervise ourselves just as Allah supervises and protects ourselves. We protect our worlds and our families and our actions and our spirits and our souls uh, and our beings, just as Allah offers that protection to us. We find calm in Allah's control and Allah's protection. Uh, we don't um, you know, worry in the sense that we may have some things that come about in life that hurt us, but we ultimately have that faith that Allah is the one who's in control regardless of what happens. And just like in al mumin we have a freedom from worry, freedom from fear, because we believe that at the end of the day, uh, our, uh, our ending is with Allah and our uh, reunion, inshallah, will be with Allah. And lastly, remember, 
as with all the other names, but we do not do what we do not want the, uh, the attribute or we want, want a lot to do to us. So we want a lot to protect us. We want a lot to be there for us. As such, we want uh, to be protectors for other people. Um, we don't want a lot to hurt us or to harm us or to not protect us. And as such, we wouldn't want for others what we don't want for ourselves. We want for ourselves or we want for others what we want for ourselves. And that includes in this aspect, the protection of Allah and not the oppression or harm um, in, in any aspect. And we don't want that for anybody else. So being agents of uh, protection, being agents of uh, assistance and of development and of safety for other people. So we ask that Allah allows us to become agents of salam. We ask Allah that Allah bestows peace upon us in this world. We ask Allah that Allah bestows security upon us in our belief, security upon us in all aspects. And we ask Allah to be the one that protects our safety, protects our peace and protects us so that we too may be protectors upholders of justice, upholders of peace, and upholders of security for all others. Inshallah, I mean, until the next session. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa